Hey everybody, it's Corey from AquariumCoop.com. Today, we're talking about ammonia. You're probably here if you have high ammonia levels. Maybe uh, you're new to a tank or something like that. Or someone said, you gotta get that under control. Well, we're gonna explain how to get under control and hopefully you'll understand it. Because a lot of people, they know they have high ammonia. Their test kit says they're in danger level, but they don't know how to get through it. The fish are acting weird, that type of thing. So today, for the example, we're gonna use M&Ms. This blue M&M represents water, just normal water. This yellow M&M represents ammonia. And this right here is a little aquarium. We're gonna call it a 20 gallon aquarium. It's got 20 blue M&Ms just for sake of, you know, trying to keep it straight here. So probably what happens is you got a brand new aquarium or, you know, your power went out or something has caused elevated ammonia. But the most common scenario is gonna be, I'm brand new to the hobby, brand new tank. I don't know what's going on. Uh, and so what do we do? We set it up, we add fish, and then we start feeding it. You might be feeding something like small bug bites or whatever, and when you peel the, the thing back and you read about it, it's gonna say, uh, feed as much as the fish can eat in two minutes, two to three times a day, right? So we're, we're good aquarists, so we're gonna follow instructions. And, you know, so that means in the morning, we're gonna feed, and what does that do? When we feed, it makes ammonia. So we add an ammonia to the tank. Now, if you were to test your water and look for ammonia, you might not quite see it yet, and the fish probably aren't reacting to it, and it's no big deal. But then you're going, well, you know, it's lunchtime, I'm gonna eat a sandwich, so maybe I better feed again. You put another one in there. And then it's dinner time. Well, yeah, they gotta eat two. So now you got three. And maybe tomorrow you wake up and you put food number four, you know, fourth feeding in there, and you're going, you know, they're not really eating it. You know, they ate it really well yesterday, but it seems like they're not eating it. Huh, I don't know. Well, I'll leave them to it. And then you come back around lunchtime and you feed them again, or you go to feed them and you're going, hey, they didn't eat that yet, and the water's kind of milky. So now you might have posted on Facebook or, you know, just reached out to someone and said, hey, what's going on? My fish aren't eating and my water's all milky. Chances are they're going to tell you you need a test kit. So what you're going to do is you're going to go and get a test kit if you don't already own one. I hope you do. And if you're listening to this right now and you don't own a test kit, buy yourself a test kit. It's the most quintessential thing you'll need in this hobby. You'll always need one. You might not have to use it all the time, but it's kind of like owning a screwdriver at your house. You might not need it today, but you will need a screwdriver. It just It is needed. So you get that test kit. You test your water, you dip it in there, or you get your little vial, and it's gonna come back that you have four parts per million ammonia. And when you compare that to your chart, it's gonna say that's toxic or dangerous. And so that becomes the point usually which someone reaches out to Facebook or let's say aquariumcoop.com or wherever you're getting your information, and you go, well, what do I do? And you'll get all kinds of responses from, you need to change some water, you need to stop feeding, you need ammonia pads or ammonia remover, you need to change 50%, maybe it's 10% every day. And so I'm hoping that this illustration is gonna show you how to do it. Now my first uh, recommendation is 50% water changes if it's high, you know, so keep in mind, we're on day two, let's say, and we notice we have four parts per million ammonia, and let's say you go, okay, I'm gonna do a 50% water change. So you're gonna take out, you know, lots of water because that's what you do with a water change. So we've taken out two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So that's 50%. But we also take out 50% of the ammonia, right? And all that goes down the drain. There it goes. Now we gotta put water back in. So the 10 M&Ms went back in. Maybe it's 10 gallons of water depending on the size of your tank. And we've got two ammonia left in there. So we've got half as much as we started with. We had four, 50%. Now we have two. Then you might use a dechlorinator, something like Hikari Ultimate or Prime or any other myriad of uh, dechlorinators typically has an element in it that will bind ammonia. What does that do? That basically means it's going to bind up the ammonia and make it less toxic. It doesn't remove it from the water. It kind of just puts it off to the side where it can be uh, less toxic for 24 hours. Though. That's the key ingredient. It only does that for 24 hours. And then after 24 hours, it basically just scrambles in there again. 
So you can use it very temporarily to make it less toxic for your fish and kind of separate it out, um, which is useful because when you break down chlorine, that also makes some ammonia. So really, we might have done that water change. We actually brought in a little bit of ammonia with the chlorine, but good news is it binds all that up for 24 hours. Now, if this is a brand new tank, Unfortunately, you might not have bacteria and stuff to process ammonia, and so we might be relying on water changes until our tank cycles. If you haven't seen that video, uh, click on a link and you can go watch M&M's teaching you how to cycle an aquarium. But, uh, so, you've done your water change, you're feeling confident about it, you probably didn't see this ammonia go in because you, you wouldn't have known unless you've watched that this video. So you've done your water change and you know it's been a hard day so your fish are hungry right so you feed them again and then at dinner time you feed them again and then tomorrow morning you feed them again because we're following the instructions and then you're going i don't get it they're still at the top they're gasping they don't look right i just did a water change you test the water and you're going there's six parts per million ammonia because now we have six actually we have five let's make six here we have six parts per million ammonia then you go, okay, I know I'm supposed to do a 50% water change. So again, you take out three ammonia and you take out 10 of the blue ones. Two, four, six, eight, 10. And then the ammonia goes away, back comes these, and we're down to three. Now, the worst part is we have more ammonia today than we do yesterday, even though we're doing 50% water changes every day. Now, if we remember, Feeding the aquarium is what causes the ammonia. So let's pretend that we now have watched this video and we know just do my 50% water change, I better not feed because that's gonna add more ammonia back in. So we don't feed anymore. Now it's tomorrow, we test the water, we're going, oh, there's three parts per million in there. I'll do a 50% water change. Out comes, you know, let's say two, because it's one and a half. We don't wanna break one and a half here. But let's say you can get rid of both, you did 60%. And then you remove a bunch of water. Those go away. In comes the new water. Very little ammonia left. And we don't feed that day. They're not gonna starve, don't worry about that. We'll do much more harm with ammonia by killing them than we will by just letting them starve. So then we go to the next day, we test it. We're going, oh, we're at one part per million. We do another 50% water change. We take out a bunch of water. We take out the last ammonia. We put the water back in. And now we have a tank back to where we started. There's still fish alive. They're looking pretty good. They might even look like they're really hungry and there's no ammonia. The trick here is to not just go and think we're done. When we talk about cycling an aquarium and all that kind of stuff, we look at it as an on or off switch. And really it's, a, it's like on a big, big curve. So you might, your tank might learn how to digest. It's a little bit of ammonia. So what you wanna do is, so now it's, zero ammonia, wait like another day, so now it's like day four or five, and we might feed once that day, just a little bit, right? We just have one ammonia in there, and then we don't feed at all. The next day, we test the water, it's still got, maybe it's like half a part per million, so we've got some bacteria working, some not, uh, and then we don't feed again, and let's say we go to the next day, and let's say this ammonia got eaten up by the bacteria, it's no longer in the water, you could test and go, hey, there's no ammonia. You feed again once. And you keep doing that until the next day it's gone. And then you could go back to feeding twice a day if you wanted. But most aquarists, unless you're raising fish up, feed once a day and you keep a schedule of water changes that helps you get through that. Now, the big important lesson here is that it is a mathematical equation. If you have four parts per million ammonia and you change uh, 50%, you're gonna be left with two yellow ones when you put the water back in. And if you do 50% every day, eventually you'll get to the end of it. Now, at the beginning we talked about maybe someone suggested doing 10% every day, that type of thing. If you have four in there and you do 25% water change, you're still only gonna get rid of one and it's gonna remain pretty toxic. So the key takeaways, I think, if you're struggling with high ammonia is one, Find the ammonia source, most likely food. Could be rotting plants, could be a dead fish in the corner we don't see, could be something, could be your water, your tap water sometimes has ammonia, but figure out the ammonia source, it's gonna be food. Uh, and then 
change water at an appropriate schedule so that you bring it down. I say anything at 0.5 and under is relatively safe for your fish and to let your aquarium go ahead and digest through. Anything above that, go ahead and start changing water. If you have just tons and tons and tons of ammonia in there, you're gonna have to do really big water changes. And some people will recommend doing 80, 90%. I'm not a fan of that. I would much rather do 50% and then wait a couple hours and then do another 50%, you know, and then maybe do 50% the next day, you're much better off and not, you're hopefully not gonna run out of water with your water heater and all that kind of stuff. So don't freak out, but do know you gotta, you gotta change water and probably lay off the food for at least, at least a few days to get through this, whether it's a brand new tank, uh, power went out, whatever caused the upset in your aquarium, you can get through it and uh, just take it easy and ask questions down below in the comments if you don't understand. Everyone can kind of crowdsource and help you through that. You can always join the Aquarium Group Support, which is a Facebook group, and uh, get your answers there as well. So good luck, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video on cycling or wherever you are at in your hobby. We'll see you there.